Hello and uh, welcome to a new video about Greylog. In this one, I'm going to talk to you about uh, the enterprise version of Greylog. If you didn't know, it's uh, free, up to 5 uh, gigabytes per day of data that can be ingested into it. So if you're running a very small environment or if you don't have more than uh, 5 gigabytes per day, I really recommend you to uh, go for the enterprise version because you can do so much more with it and uh, right now I'm gonna highlight to you the differences between uh, the open source and the enterprise so as you can see compared to the open source version uh, it can do correlation uh, engine that means that it can correlate uh, two or more uh, events that uh, are appearing in your alerting system uh, you can uh, do reports and also schedule them uh, you can uh, use uh, a data forwarder. Uh, basically, what this one does is that um, you have a, a gray log instance and then you can uh, forward it to another cluster. And then, of course, you have uh, uh, some uh, log uh, archiving method. Compared to the snapshot that uh, I have shown you using uh, Elasticsearch from a previous video, you can have uh, audit logs, you can have a uh, search flow with uh, parameters and you, of course, you get uh, technical support for the um, uh, free enterprise version. I'm not sure exactly how many uh, tickets you can open for technical support, but uh, I guess that the idea should be very limited. If you want to go for the enterprise version, you can um, click on uh, download now and let's skip the open source section and let's go for the enterprise and here you need to put your first name your last name the company some email address and the Greylock cluster id now how you get the cluster uh, id you need to go into your web interface for Greylock. Uh, click on enterprise and here you have the Greylock cluster and uh, the cluster ID, naturally. So you need to copy this cluster ID, paste it in here, uh, and with all the details filled, uh, click on get your free license. And after this, what happens is that uh, they will uh, send you automatically an uh, email with uh, a license ID. So after you get your license, you need to uh, put the license or to load it uh, into Greylog. But as you can see, it says that uh, the Greylog Enterprise plugin is not installed. So how do you install the Enterprise plugin? You would simply need to go uh, or SSH into your uh, server. Then you will need to take uh, this command from the official documentation and tell it how to install it. And depending on your distribution, you might want to go for the Debian version or the RPM version. So you're going to paste it, uh, hit enter. Okay, we will say yes, we want to install it. And now that we have finished it, uh, we will do a system CTL restart and then Greylock service. Let's check for the status, just to make sure that everything is okay. And it is. Let's go back to the web interface. Okay, we are logged in. Right now, let's go to Enterprise. And click on Licenses. And over here, we, we have the cluster ID, yeah, and we will click on uh, Import License. In the email, you will receive a text file and you simply copy the, the whole uh, content from the text file and paste it in here. So this is what I'm going to do. Okay, and right now it will say that uh, I have a valid license and it's valid for one year. So most probably after one year, you will have to renew it and click on import. 
and right now the the license is uh, activated and as you can see here the uh, daily traffic limit is five gigabytes per day and uh, there are some uh, violations uh, allowed for uh, a period of uh, 30 days that means that you have maximum five and you are also uh, uh, for uh, remote checks so you're letting them check your license or check your traffic data and uh, the license expiration is warning after uh, 30 days before yeah so 30 days before it expires it will uh, warn you okay so pretty much that's it for the installation now what can you do with uh, this one with the enterprise version so first of all let's check the correlation engine so we will gonna go to uh, alerts and here we will gonna do some kind of uh, new event definition and we will skip it to condition and in here you will see that you have the event correlation activated basically what it does it uh, correlates uh, defined events uh, to identify meaningful incidents so for example uh, right now you cannot do anything with it because you will need to create uh, first uh, an event so you will need to click on uh, filter and aggregation and then here create an event and if you have multiple events like uh, minimum two events or more events uh, then you can have an event correlation so let's say that uh, for example I don't know you want to monitor your um, SSH access uh, to the server right so you can say that um, if there is a uh, uh, a user which is uh, able to log in uh, as root after um, uh, five failures and the sixth one is uh, a success you need to trigger an uh, alert yeah so you can receive that one by email uh, another one mm, another important feature is that you can do uh, report and here you can create a report you can uh, give it a title subtitle a logo here you can insert a picture and uh, you have um, some kind of widgets right so I don't know you can say uh, let's do all of them yeah and then create a report ah we will need to fill something in the title report then create report and right now we were going to go to comments sorry not to comments but download the report right now so we're going to display the report some some messages over time and messages for source and blah 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 uh, this report you can um, also send it to an email so you can go to configuration and then uh, send this report automatically on a regular basis select the frequency uh, the mail you can send it via email uh, mail body uh, users or mail recipient and here is a preview or the layout except this one let's go for the audit log and here you can see that um, uh, the, the users which have done something and you have created a job for search or for something else um, so this is one way to to track what your users are doing in the tool then let's go for the um, archives another important feature so you can uh, archive uh, your indices uh, very easily so um, you can uh, select the index you know, the index that you want to back up uh, and then back it up simply as that you can click on archive index and it will simply do it so let's just do it just for the sake of this video
Okay, and this is how it looks like. We have the index name, uh, backend, and so on. Uh, this is the destination where it goes. And uh, if you get your index uh, deleted, you can uh, restore it or delete it from here or delete the archive. Yeah. So I'm just going to delete the archive because I don't really need it. You can also uh, do some kind of configuration. Uh, you can do the max uh, segment size, uh, the compression type, uh, the checksum. Um, what do you want to um, select for streams? What kind of streams you want to back up? And right now, let's go for the backends. Here you can see that uh, the default one we're going to go to the temp directory to some kind of Greylock archive. And here you can archive your everything, but uh, you can also edit it. Uh, this one is not editable, so let's just create a new one. And here, if you have a different path where you want to save, you can do it from here. Now, if we are going back to the configuration, there is something uh, here which I don't really like is the fact that you don't have any kind of automation for automatic uh, backups. So let's say that uh, I would like to uh, back up uh, the data every, I don't know, every week. Yeah. So I don't have to uh, go and manually tell it to, to back it up or not back it up. Yeah. So there is no automation and hopefully uh, uh, the people from this company will uh, have this one in mind for the future release and maybe implement it because I would think that it would be very, very useful. That's pretty much about uh, the Greylog Enterprise. Uh, like I said before in the beginning of this video, if you don't have more than uh, uh, 5 gigabytes uh, per day as an uh, ingest rate, feel free to go for this one. It's much better than the open source version and uh, it has some uh, cool feature and useful features into it. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe and talk to you guys in the next one.